Okay. My name is Gerald Wilson. I was born in Shelby, Mississippi, a very small town, which is located about 90 miles south of Memphis, Tennessee. My mother was a school teacher, and she was also a music teacher. She played piano, and I have a brother and a sister. They both started on piano when they were four years old, as my mother started all of us at that early age. And uh, uh, she, since she was a school teacher, of course, I started school there. Uh, what happened was, after my first uh, uh, years there in Shelby, I uh, went to Laurel, Mississippi for one year with my mother. She went there to teach school there in Laurel, Mississippi for a year, which was very nice. I enjoyed it there. But we were quickly uh, back home to Shelby, where she went back to the school where she was teaching before, and she stayed there and taught until she retired. She taught in Shelby, Mississippi when it was segregated, and she taught in Shelby, Mississippi after it was integrated. Uh, I would like to move my education on because we had uh, our school in Shelby only went through the grammar school, which was through the eighth grade. After the eighth grade, you'd have to go somewhere else to go to high school. I was lucky enough to get my mother to send me to Memphis, Tennessee, and Memphis, uh, where I started my high school. I, I went to a school called Manassa High School there, and I went there for three years. Uh, the three years uh, was very nice in Memphis. It was a very nice town, very nice city. I enjoyed my uh, stay there because I had a great music teacher, good trumpet teacher, and as I say, I attended that school for three years. I was lucky in 1934, I got a chance to go to the World's Fair in Chicago, Illinois. That would be its second year. It was there two years, 1933 and 1934. But things were very good there. But I was so enthused with the way Chicago was that I begged my mother to send me back to Chicago to finish my high school work there. Well, what happened was that my mother couldn't send me to Chicago, but she could send me to Detroit, Michigan. And this was a blessing in disguise because when I got to Detroit, Michigan, I thought I was gonna to go to a segregated school there, like the, many of the schools in the United States at that time were segregated. But when I got to Detroit, I found out that there were no segregated schools in Detroit. All of the schools were integrated already. And Detroit was way ahead of many cities. And the school that I attended, there was a school by the name of Cass Tech, that's C-A-S-S-T-E-C-H, Cass Tech. Cass Tech, I was gonna go finish my last year of high school there. But again, I had another lesson in disguise because its music school was second only to Juilliard in New York City. So this was a chance for me to study at a great music school, as I said, one of the greatest in the United States. And uh, due to some, uh, a few uh, lower grades in geometry and algebra, uh, which uh, they, after they, uh, examined me there. Of course, you had to know how to play your instrument before you could get into school. You couldn't come there to say, I would like to learn to play the trumpet. I would like to learn the piano. You would have to take a whole music course. And that included piano for me again. It included harmony and orchestration. It included uh, 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 percussion, uh, voice training, everything to music. So. They put me back to the ninth grade because of my low grades in uh, geometry and algebra. They weren't that bad. They were like a C or something like that. Uh, you know, I would have passed, which I did pass, but they did put me back to the ninth grade. So I would have to stay and go to school there for four years. I was really happy about that because as I said now, I had 
gained what I had been looking for all my life because all my life I thought that it wasn't supposed to be like this where I came from. I didn't like it. I had to go along with what was going on. I couldn't drink out of the same fountain with a white person. I couldn't go to, to any place where it wasn't segregated. So I always wanted to be in a place like that. Well, Detroit was all that. You could go to all the theaters downtown. You could go out to the public parks, which is Belle Isle, one of the biggest parks in Detroit, which faces Canada, by the way, those of you who are not familiar with Detroit. So I had the great opportunity of studying there for like four years. And then just as I would have graduated the next year, I got an offer to join the, one of the best orchestras in the world. In fact, it was the number two black orchestra in the world. The number one orchestra was Duke Ellington and Jimmy Lunsford's band was number two. In fact, Jimmy Lunsford's band actually followed the great Duke Ellington into the Cotton Club where they, in New York, where they were sensational. And as I said, we were kind of like the Beatles. We, was, we could draw so many people that uh, we were all in the biggest crowds. So in, we came to, to Los Angeles in 1940 and we played here at the Shrine Auditorium. First night here in California though with me was in Glendale where I played at the Civic Auditorium there. And uh, this is quite uh, a coincidence and uh, I married a girl from Glendale, California. My wife is from California, and uh, my wife is Mexican. And uh, of course, we've been together for oh, oh well over in the, to the 50s. And so I'm very happy with she. I have three beautiful daughters and three nice daughters. Uh, she's given me, yeah. she's given me. Uh, Right here now, I'm going to just go along fast with the Lunsford Orchestra. We played, as I played, played Glendale the first night in town. The second night, we played at the Shrine Auditorium. And then the next day after that, we played a matinee dance at the Shrine Auditorium Exposition Hall there that afternoon. It, it was quite a deal there. They had quite a thing happen there. They had a big fight got started in there, so they had to stop the dance, so we didn't finish that particular dance. Anyway, we were downtown now on 6th and uh, right off of Broadway at the Paramount Theater here, here in Los Angeles, which was very wonderful. I enjoyed that engagement there. The Lunsford Band was so popular that we played in a club in Culver City called the Casa Manana. Uh, this was a segregated club. Uh, it had been seg segregated for many years. It was originally Sebastian's Cotton Club. And then that's where all the big black acts played. And uh, so Jimmy Lunch, we came back and we played that place for six weeks. After that six weeks, we made a trip up north and the band was so po got so popular here that they brought us back right away and during that engagement at the Casa Mignana, again, we got an offer to appear in a Warner Brothers movie called Blues in the Night, one of the biggest uh, hits of the year that year in the movies. Uh, this was a wonderful movie. We had a good role in it. And we was, as I say again, we were so popular, they wanted us to stay and do another scene, but we were already booked way ahead and we couldn't stay, we had to keep on traveling. <clears throat> With the Lunsford Band, it was nothing but great days. By the way, Jimmy Lunsford had been a teacher at the school that I taught, that I went to in Memphis, Tennessee. Not at the time when I was there, because I was just a little kid when he was teaching there. He, he left there in 1928, and I was born in 1918. So, uh, he didn't know me, you know, I never met him until I joined his band, really. But it was wonderful being with, with Jimmy Lunsford. And um, am I missing anything, Josefina? Uh, 